the idea that black people and white people could be seen as people together in so many parts of the United States, North and South, things, those views, you could hold them, but you couldn't speak about them publicly. He's writing about them and printing them and taking a chance that he could get killed. William Lloyd Garrison, a radical voice for the abolitionist cause, and one of the very few white abolitionists in 19th century America. An extremely talented, religious, and persistent Massachusetts man, who very publicly voiced his concerns and was a prominent supporter of the emancipation of slavery. William Lloyd Garrison strongly believed that the enslavement of African Americans was wrong and that all men were equal in the eyes of God. Garrison felt very passionate about the emancipation of slavery. To spread the word, he founded his own newspaper, The Liberator, to express what he thought about slavery. Garrison's idea for the paper was to educate people about slavery and its emancipation. However, this wasn't Garrison's first experience in the newspaper business. He started his newspaper career when he was 14 in his hometown of Newburyport, Massachusetts. He had a very strong Christian upbringing at that time. If you no American history, uh, Protestant Christianity in the aftermath of the American Revolution was really, really strong. And his um, background is of a kind of a echo of the Puritanism that existed in Massachusetts. He refused to see himself as a spectator, and he was going to be a participant, and he was not going to sit back and watch events happen. He wanted to move events. His Christianity had a big, big role in doing that. It was during this time in his life when Garrison found that he had an almost natural talent for running a printing press, as well as writing his own stories. William Lloyd Garrison never once in his life had trouble making people hear what he had to say. He always found a way to get his opinions out and make people listen to what he was saying. He proved this when the first issue of The Liberator hit the streets in 1831. In the paper he wrote, I am in earnest. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. I will not retreat a single inch. And I will be heard. It had a very small circulation. He did all of the typesetting himself. So the newspaper was never more than about four pages of uh, broadsheet. So just from physical limitations. He was never able to print more than hundreds of copies, maybe thousands of copies every issue. His newspaper had a big influence, but not much bigger than the size of the subscription. So when you look at the number of copies that he would circulate, small. The people who talked about the Liberator, who passed it around, who used it to write their sermons on Sunday, that was huge. The paper condemned slavery as inhumane and called people who supported slavery sinners. Garrison was so eager to be noticed, he gave copies away to his neighbors in Boston, and even mailed some to Southern newspaper editors. William Lloyd Garrison often characterized many Southern political figures, such as Kentucky Senator Henry Clay, as pitiful and sinful in his newspaper. Most people in Boston disagreed with Garrison, but did nothing to show it. Of course, the Southern editors were furious, and wrote about Garrison in their own newspapers. Garrison, being the clever man he is, used the editors to gain publicity and circulate his beliefs on abolition. In his opening lines of his newspaper, um, he will state unequivocally that slavery is a mortal sin. It's a mortal sin. And that he would never be quiet or silenced in speaking about it. That it not only was a mortal sin, it was a legal abomination, it was imperative for every Christian. He always would phrase this in terms of Christianity. From a Christian point of view, you couldn't be a Christian and a slave owner. You couldn't be a Christian and a slave supporter. And then he would just extend and say, you can't be a Christian and ignore slavery. Almost all Americans believed slavery was fair, customary, and essential, especially to the American economy. Garrison assumed a polar opposite mindset, which enraged Southerners and pushed his abolitionist beliefs to the limit. 3,000 Southerners in Charleston even burned him in effigy and destroyed many of his works. In the fall of 1835, a violent crowd had gathered around Garrison's office in Boston. 
The angry mob caught up to him and threatened to beat and tar him. Fortunately, Garrison was put into jail for the night for his own protection. Due to southern newspapers, Garrison's popularity rapidly grew, and some white men and slave owners were beginning to have a deep hatred attached to his name. Garrison writes in The Liberator, My language is exactly as it suits me. It will displease many, I know. To displease them is my intention. Eight months after Garrison started The Liberator, there was a bloody uprising in the state of Virginia, the state which held almost 400,000 enslaved blacks. The rebellion was led by Nat Turner and four other slaves, who murdered their owner and his family and other neighboring white residents. Virginia is 600 miles away from where Garrison lives in Boston, who had no correlation to the uprising. However, in southern newspapers, his name started to pop up when the rebellion was mentioned. In the newspapers, Garrison was criticized for encouraging the rebellion of the slaves, even though Garrison disagreed with any sort of violence. When Garrison heard news of the rebellion, he took to publishing his thoughts in The Liberator and wrote, I do not justify the slaves in their rebellion, yet I do not condemn them. Of all men living, our slaves have the best reason to assert their rights by violent measures. Soon after he wrote this, a bounty was placed on his head by the Georgia House of Representatives for $5,000. A separate reward for $1,500 was for the capture of anybody in possession of a copy of The Liberator, which was offered by a group in South Carolina. He had a uh, price on his head in most southern states. People were, were told that if they could bring him in dead or alive, they'd get paid hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, depending on which way. Uh, he knew that if he traveled close to the border area, so if he took a trip to uh, Washington, D.C. and had to go through Maryland, he would be taking his life in his hands. Garrison continued to write about the brutality of slavery and continued to gain publicity for his solid belief that it was against God's will. He constantly put his life in jeopardy with every issue of The Liberator he printed. Garrison knew this, yet he remained the editor of The Liberator for 34 years. His harsh yet genuine words raised tensions between two opposing, growing sides on the issue of slavery. Numerous people, blacks and whites, were motivated by his bold words. Countless people across the country were becoming aware of Garrison and the problems he was addressing, reading his newspaper, and being steered towards the abolitionist movement. The abolitionist count in America was rapidly growing and beginning to have a large voice in politics. When the Civil War began, Garrison, along with a sizable abolitionist population, heavily supported the Emancipation Proclamation proposed by President Lincoln. He made this subject the main topic of most of his newspapers from 1862 until 1865, when Garrison's dreams had finally become a reality, and the proclamation was signed. Garrison published the last issue of The Liberator in 1865, ending its publication. There was no more use for its teachings. He lived the rest of his life peacefully until he died on May 24, 1879. Frederick Douglass, an escaped free slave and an old friend of Garrison's, called it a mournful honor. Garrison's white skin made him different, and it made him um, a familiar figure, especially the fact that he emphasized Christianity so much and the Christian duty to be against slavery. Freed slaves around the country prayed and gave many thanks to the great William Lloyd Garrison. Garrison was a fiery, outspoken religious man who truly proved the effect one person can have. His words were read by the great Martin Luther King Jr. and countless others nonviolently expressed their opinions as Garrison did. Garrison was constantly put down and threatened for what he believed in. Yet he never backed down or gave up and ended up victorious. Garrison proved to be one of the most significant revolutionaries of the 19th century, who continues to serve as an example for individuals wishing to express one's conscience.